took that two day permaderm class and became a dermologist with about uh, 300 other people in that classroom. I believe the class was $6,000 for the two days and they wouldn't give you the certificate unless you bought the equipment that went with it. And as you probably know, it was a, a Spalding and Rogers Puma Quick Change is what was in it. And um, I think they charged another 3000 or some, some ridiculous amount. You know, promise the world that it's not a tattoo, um, you know, whatever else that they came up with and sent us out on our way. And, you know, I remember thinking, this is a tattoo and I just spent so much of my mother's money to do this, but I got it. You know, I realized that there was something there. It was, you know, I got it. And so I pursued it. I started, I started sneaking around the tattoo shops to see what kind of ink they were mixing. I mean, we had nothing. We had the little bottles that they, you know, put in the, in the, in the kit for us. That was it. Well, I lucked out. There was a lady that owned a place in Sausalito, California. Um, it was called About Faces. And I went in there all proud and showed her that I did. <laughs> she just kind of looked at me. And at that point, she pretty much had the corner on the market of this. And so um, she hired me and showed me how to do hair stroke brows. So all I've ever done is hair stroke brows. I had to relearn how to do a powder brow, although we did have very, very thick needles, so they didn't make those real fine, wispy hairs. And um, I worked, and I mean, she would have me in Atlanta when it was totally illegal. I was all of maybe 24, so I had no idea. Fly me in, start at 8 in the morning, finish up, last client at 10, one right after another. She was charging $1,000 a procedure. She was paying me well, but nothing clearly what you know she was making. Had to be 88 at one of the one of the Atlanta show, uh, you know, junkets, whatever you want to call it. Um, there was a alopecia convention going on, and she had a booth, and I saw this lady struggling to to pick up a television, so I helped her, and it was G.J. Norman, and. Um, of course, I got in trouble for talking to the competition, but Gigi gave me her number and I called her when I got home. And then she put me in touch with Mary Jane Hockey. And from that point on, it just kind of evolved. The other ironic part of it was I had gone to beauty college when I was 19. And in my class was a gal named Lulu. Well, Lulu's sister-in-law at the time was Susan Preston. And when I bumped into Lulu, she said, you know, that's interesting because my sister-in-law is starting an insurance company that's gonna cover you. Because oh we couldn't gosh. get a hold of Marie. They wouldn't answer the phone at the time. I don't even know if that was, if it's the same company or whatever, which is right. just like, so. We had nothing. I think they took pity on us and said, well, they're gonna be, they're gonna be tattooing whether or not they know they're tattooing or not. So we have two choices. We're gonna either show them or not. And they did. And I remember um, Patty had a convention down in Orange County that I went to, it was the very first one. And she invited like Huck Spaulding and all the body artists, Sheila May. I mean, they were all there. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's just, you think about it, it, it was, they had to be laughing at us. They had to be. <laughs> oh, we're going to do eyebrows and eyeliner, but we're not tattooing. Pretty much. My husband and I owned a hotel up in Tahoe at one point. Um, so there was, I was still kind of working a little bit, but not having the full blown operation that I had. And so, yeah, that's all I've done. It's put a roof over our heads. It's educated my kids, shown them the world. So pretty lucky. The availability of products. I mean, we've got choices now. We've got, we've got pigments that will last, stay true to color. We've got machinery that with paint brushes that will, that will do whatever it is that we need them to do. I think that's the, the biggest change is, is the amount of availability of products to enhance what it is that we do. 
you know, I was blessed to know Lyle Tuttle and his doodads, and and he actually he actually resided about an hour from me here in where I live, and so um, to see the little you know the little doodads, it, it you know, and you look at some some people's work and it'll blow your mind. Then you go to the next artist, and it's like the last one was kindergarten. I mean, it's just, um, it's, you thought that was great. Well, watch this. <laughs> like, amazing. He would, he always said he would never have made it in today's world with the doodads that he created. I hope I've made every procedure that I've done special and a difference. There's not one person that, you know, that sat in my chair that I didn't really truly care about. I might not have liked them or their attitude or, or what, but I would like to hope that I gave them, you know, 1,000% of my artistic ability. It is, it's easy for them, but this is not an easy job. It wrecks havoc on our backs, our eyesight. When that money comes fast, because it is a lot of money. We're not, we're not kidding anybody. It's a right. lot of money. It goes out of their hands as fast too. That's my number one thing is you've got to save your money, the money that you're making. Uh, no one really cares what kind of purse, car, whatever. If it makes you feel good, pick out a few treats, but for the most part, you know, it, save your money. And the other thing is don't reinvent the wheel. We've already done that. We've done the, the, the BB glow. We've done the, yes. the eye. That, oh, that is actually, that would probably be my one, um, the one thing that really was pretty bad is I did do it under eye concealer, looked beautiful for about six months until it turned to cottage cheese. And um, I always sad, jokingly, she died of something else. Otherwise I would have lost my ass in a lawsuit. I would say pick one thing that you want to be really, really good at, be it eyeliner or brows. Or, or or areolas or scar revision, something. Pick one thing and build upon that. Don't try and just last open the doors. Keep your feet wet a little bit to see if it's actually something you're gonna like. Because mm -hmm. I think I was told at one point the average permanent makeup artist lasts two years before they quit. And then if they're gonna come back, it's like within that year to two years later, and then they're stuck. Then they're then they're they're gonna stick with it. it it's, it's a pretty high high dropout rate because it's hard, and not everyone that you do is gonna be thrilled. The people coming into our office are are unhappy about something, say their eyebrows, and they expect us to fix it. And if it's not what they really perceived, we did our job, but they're not gonna be happy with that. Yeah, they're not getting the training. They're just right. not. And it's hard. It's hard and it's boring and no one wants to do it because it is hard and it's boring. Mm -hmm. And but they don't understand that, you know, laying the cement for a home, that's mm -hmm. not the decorating. It's got to be longer than mm -hmm. than even what, you know, some of the requirements for like SPCP or, or whatnot. Um, I did apprenticeships. I and every gal that I did an apprenticeship with, except for two, I believe, are, are still working where I'm or I'm retired. Well, I mean, they didn't really have regulations when I started. It was, it was do what you want. And then all of a sudden, the health department is, is stepping in. I'm like, wait, 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 what's, what's, why do I have to do all this? For the most part, um, everything I was doing was fine. Uh, the biggest, the biggest benefit was um, getting rid of that autoclave and having everything disposed. Because, you know, we had an autoclave. I'm in a doctor's office and I had my own and he has his for his, his, his setups. But no one ever told us to test them. We just assumed they worked. That's all changed. That's all changed. Oh, definitely. I mean, we're family. Matter of fact, well, GJ, uh, just her daughter was just out here visiting, so I got to see her. Um, you know, this year's kind of obviously sucked because we right. have near conventions, and, and th I love going because those they're my family, they're my friends. Yeah. They've been through everything. They've been through my kids, my marriage, my whatever. Um, you know, Mary Jane is, Mary Jane Hockey is, you know, I can remember 
physically getting ill in the bathroom calling her you gotta help and she's been there for me yeah. so as kate champy i mean it's we're we're family yeah i don't think there's one person that's better than the other or who makes the most or who does the most no one cares well that has saved all of us you right. know i mean if i have you know a wound question i you know call shannon if i have you know it just it, it we have people in certain places and we tend I think we tend to gravitate to the people that are in those places instead of the ones that are, are around us because technically, yes, that is our competition, but there's so much work out there to go around. Wake up every morning and give it the 1000% because if you do that, when you go home at night, you're going to be able to sleep.